During my trip to Papua New Guinea, I got a chance to scuba dive down to a World War II wreck. Because so much intense fighting took place in the South Pacific in World War II, there was a lot of wreck dives in the area of Papua New Guinea. This dive was of, of an American Mitchell B-25D bomber that had had a six-person crew that lies in a depth of 60 feet of water off of Wangat Island off the coast of Papua New Guinea near the city of Madang. It was an incredible experience diving to this historic wreck. It's a little piece of the United States that lies at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean. This plane was built in Kansas City and it was flown by guys from Tennessee, Texas, New York, and Oregon. I've done a lot of scuba diving across the world, but this dive was special to me. The North American B-25 was a twin-engine medium-sized bomber. It was named after Major General William Billy Mitchell, who advocated in years before World War II for the use of bombers to sink battleships. He is the first person for whom an American military aircraft was named after. This aircraft, a B-25D-5, was named the Elusive Lizzie, and later it was called the Miss America. It was built in Kansas City and delivered to the U.S. Air Force on January 13, 1943. Coincidentally, it was flown from the mainland to Hickam Airfield on Oahu in Hawaii, close to where I used to live. From there, the plane was flown to Australia. The B-25D flew about 15 missions during eight months of service until it was shot down. On August 5, 1943, while on a strafing mission to search and destroy Japanese barge traffic off the coast near Madang, the plane was hit by a shell in the right engine. Pilot Robert Harry was able to ditch the aircraft and it floated above the water for a bit before it sank. The crew consisted of two pilots, a navigator, an engineer, and a tail gunner. The tail gunner, Staff Sergeant Raymond Zimmerman, was killed in the landing. The surviving crew swam to Wangat Island. One of them managed to hide in a tree and was not captured right away, but all of them were eventually captured. They were taken as prisoners of war, interrogated, and beaten. Sadly, on August 31st, 1943, four of the crew members were executed with bayonets. Those four were Captain Robert Harry, Second Lieutenant Robert Koskelmack, First Lieutenant Louis Ridico, and Technical Sergeant Hugh Anderson. Amazingly, Major Winston Cox, who was the command pilot, survived the war as a prisoner of war and passed away 40 years later in 1980. The plane wreck was discovered in 1979 and it's become a popular local wreck dive. Unfortunately, within days of the wreck's discovery, vandals stole the side guns and other artifacts off of the plane. However, the aircraft is mostly still intact, except for the left engine, which is missing and presumably torn off during the crash landing. The cockpit hatch on the plane is open and lets you see where the pilots actually sat. There are no human remains in this wreck. tail gunner who died during the landing was never found, but he is memorialized at the Manila American Cemetery. The remains of other crew members were later identified and returned to their home states for burial. After the plane went down, the surviving crew swam to Wangat Island. Native people paddled canoes out to the island in search for the downed crew and detained them. Ridicule managed to avoid being captured by hiding in a tree. The crew were taken to the Kampai headquarters at Amron, and along the way they were beaten by Japanese soldiers. Major Cox was separated from the crew and questioned. Cox refused to cooperate because there was no Japanese officer present at his interrogations. He was hit in the face and had one of his teeth knocked out. The other two soldiers beat him. Afterwards, Cox was put in captivity with his rest of the crewmates. 
For the next 12 days, the crew were bound, handcuffed, and placed into two cells. The crew was interrogated and beaten every day. Each day, the prisoners were questioned about their unit, the bomber, their base, and strength of aircraft in Papua New Guinea. Major Cox refused to answer these questions. The other crew members were also questioned but refused to cooperate. Two days later, a Japanese interpreter arrived to question them further. Major Cox requested to be taken to the commanding officer at Madang, but he was told that he was not available. He also asked for food and water for his crew, which was given to them. Meanwhile, Ridico had managed to evade capture by hiding in a tree on the island. But after several days without food and unable to swim off the island, he gave himself up to the Japanese and was also taken to Kempai Tai headquarters at Amron. When Ridico joined the rest of the crew, the Japanese demanded that one of the natives beat Major Cox because he didn't tell them that Ridico had been hiding in the island. Around that same time, Cox saw Harry beaten with a bamboo pole 10 times for not answering questions. After five days of beatings and interrogations, the crew were left alone for two days and rested. Next day, the most senior officers, Harry and Cox, were told that they would be split up and taken to Rabul in Papua New Guinea. During the trip, other Japanese soldiers met them and took Harry back to Amron instead. This was the last time Cox saw Harry or any of his crewmates alive. Alone, Cox was marched to Alexhofen Airfield and tied to a coconut palm for three days and beaten on a regular basis. He was given water but no food and remained at this location for five days. On August 17, 1943, Cox was flown aboard a Japanese bomber from Alexhofen Airfield to Rabul, where he was transported aboard a Japanese ship to Japan. He was interned at a prisoner of war camp in Tokyo, and he managed to survive there until the end of the war. On August 31st, 1943, the other crew members, Koskelnak, Ridico, and Anderson were blindfolded and escorted from Amron to an execution ground nearby. Each was stabbed with a bayonet and then beheaded. Afterwards, Owen Salvage, the last survivor of the B-25, was also executed. Lastly, Harry was tied between two posts and run through with a bayonet. The post-war affidavit was written by Lieutenant Corporal Yasukuni Tani, and it states, The actual execution was to be three prisoners by Kempai Tai and two by Headquarters Sentry Guard units. However, Matsumoto Kempai Tai members said, we will execute the three prisoners for the revenge of the death of our comrade, Corporal Nakano. This Matsumoto unit had a conflict several weeks ago at Kesa Village, which is located at the head of the Ramo River. The three prisoners were blindfolded and escorted down the mountain to the execution ground by the Kempai Tai members in Sergeant Major Kawawa, Corporal Ishikawa, and Private Ozawa. After about 20 minutes had elapsed, Matsumoto's Kempai Tai group came back and said, quote, execution is over now. We will proceed back immediately, unquote and walked towards Kempai Tai headquarters. The last prisoner was pilot Robert Harry. After hearing the bayonet charge yell, he said to the interpreter, Shimizu, I am going to be bayoneted, is that so? I don't want to be bayoneted. Tell the commander I want to be shot. After 10 minutes, this last prisoner was led to the execution ground and followed with the group. After this last prisoner had been tied, I could hear the sentry guard unit squad leader commanding his men to fix bayonets. At that moment, the prisoner said, Do not bayonet me. Shoot me instead. Then at first, the squad leader jabbed his bayonet into the prisoner's chest. After he jabbed the first bayonet, approximately 12 or 13 of the squad took turns bayoneting him.
I just want to give thanks to these men for their service in World War II. They made the ultimate sacrifice for us. Thank you. Thank you.